4.6 perform operations with complex numbers. Mom, some kids at school today called me 4i. So by the end of this lesson, you should understand why this joke makes sense. As we've discovered, not all quadratic equations have real number solutions. For example, if we're trying to solve something like x squared equals negative 1, we have been saying, well, there is no real number solution. But today we're going to figure out how to solve this. And we have to start by introducing imaginary numbers. And so we define i as the square root of negative 1. If i equals root negative 1, that would mean that i squared is just root negative 1 times root negative 1 or negative 1. So if we had an example like root negative 3, we could rewrite this as root negative 1 times 3 and take that root negative 1 out, which is just i, so this is i root 3. More generally, root negative r would just be i root r. If we have i root 3 squared, that would be i squared times root 3 squared. Again, because we have i root 3, that whole thing squared. So i squared is just negative 1, and root 3 squared is just 3. So i root 3 squared is just negative 3, and again, this would be negative 1 times r, so negative r. Here's some math humor to make your day. This first one, be rational, get real. Well, we remember that pi is an irrational number, and i is an imaginary number, so that's why this comic makes sense. This one just says, do i really exist? So this is funny in two ways, because first of all, root negative 1 is i, and then root negative 1 is an imaginary number, so he's questioning his existence. And then in this last comic, we're dealing with some imaginary friends that eight potentially has. So let's get to some examples. Let's do these questions like we did last lesson. Um, so let's isolate the x stuff on one side and everything else on the other. So we would subtract 18 from both sides, leaving us with 2x squared equals negative 90. Then we need to isolate that x squared all by itself before we take any roots, so we would divide by 2 and get x squared equals negative 45. So x is going to be equal to plus or minus root negative 45. Well, let's see how we can break 45 down. Well, 45 would clearly be 9 times 5, in which case we can take out a 3 and the 5 stays inside. And so this is just going to be plus or minus. We can take out the 3i and leave in that 5. And so that is our answer. A complex number written in standard form is just a plus bi. So we have a real number part and we have an imaginary part. So in these two, let's just assume that b does not equal zero because if b were equal to zero, then we would just have a real number. Um, if a does not equal zero, then we just have the, that a plus b i is a complex number in standard form. If a were equal to zero, then I would just be left with b i, and this would be a completely imaginary number. Or I guess I could call it a pure imaginary number.
because it's purely imaginary. Um, the sum of complex numbers, if we have a plus bi plus c plus di, well, we can just add the real number part, and we can add the imaginary part separately. So to do that, we would have b plus d. We could add those together, and that would be our imaginary part. I just factored out the i pretty much. And you'll see when we do some examples what I mean by that, but you just, you don't, mix and match the imaginaries and the real number part, just like you wouldn't have done with the radicals, you wouldn't have mixed and matched. The difference of complex numbers, same deal here. We have to remember to distribute this negative sign though, and so we would get a minus c as the real number part, and then we would get plus b minus d as the imaginary part. So here's a great little comic on this one. Write the expression as a complex number in standard form. So this is just using what we just did in that um, last one. So you would just add up the real number part. So 12 minus 8 is 4. And then you add up the imaginary part. So a negative 11 plus a 3 is a negative 8i. So that's the imaginary part. Again, the real number part. 15 minus 24 is negative 9, and then don't forget to distribute that negative sign. A negative 9 plus 9 is 0, so I just have a real number in this one. And then here, I'm going to remember to distribute this negative, so I would get 35 minus 13 is 22, and then minus 4i plus i is negative 3i. And that's my answer. Okay, here we just have to distribute the negative 5i to each. So I would get negative 40i minus 5 times minus 9 is plus 45 i times i is i squared. Now this is not simplified because remember i squared is negative 1. So let's replace that i squared with the negative 1 and then we would be left with negative 40i minus 45. I'm just going to rewrite it in standard form with the real number part out there first. Okay, in this problem we're going to FOIL because we have two binomials multiplied by one another, so we can't forget about the outer and inner. So the first is just negative 32, the outer is plus 56i, the inner is plus 8i, and the last is minus 14i squared. Now let's combine like terms, minus 32 plus 64i, and then remember that i squared can be replaced with that negative 1. So don't forget that i squared equals negative 1. And so we're left with minus 32 plus 14 is negative 18 plus 64i. In order to do this problem, I'm going to think back to what I was doing with rationalizing the denominator in the last section. I want to get rid of the complex number on the bottom. So in this one, I'm actually going to multiply by the complex conjugate. And I bet you can figure this out from the last section. If I have a plus bi, what is its complex conjugate going to be? Well, it's just going to be a minus bi because, again, when I multiply the two together, I'm going to get rid of that middle term. And since the last now, when I multiply those together, I'll get that i squared. That just becomes negative 1, and so I get rid of my i. So I'm going to do that in this example here. So... 3 plus 4i over 5 minus i. I'm just going to multiply by 1 in the form of 5 plus i over 5 plus i. Because again, I want the outer and the inner to cancel out. So that would be my complex conjugate there. And so then I get, let's see, let's FOIL the top. 15 outer would be plus 3i. Inner would be plus 20i. And the last is plus 4i squared over 
25. Again, the outer and the inner are plus 5 minus plus 5i minus 5i, and so they cancel out. And then we have minus i squared. So now let's combine like terms. So we get that 15 plus 23i, and then this is 4 times negative 1, which is minus 4, over 25 minus, and that's just negative 1. And so we're left with 15 minus 4 is 11 plus 23i over 26. Finally, I'm just going to divide each term by the 26. So I get 11 over 26 plus 23 over 26i. And that is my final answer in standard form. If I ask you for standard form, I need the real number part and the imaginary part separated. So this would not be a final answer, this is. Now let's get to the complex plane. The complex plane is just that we have real numbers on one axis and imaginary numbers on the other axis. And that's why this joke is funny. We have horses on this axis and the imaginary unicorn. And so how do we graph here? Well, if we have something that's purely imaginary, it's going to be right on this axis. So something like 3i just means I climb three steps on the y-axis. Something like 3 minus 2i means I go over 3 on the real axis and I go down 2 on the imaginary axis. Negative 2 plus 4i, negative 2 on the real axis. 4 on the imaginary axis, and minus 4 minus 3i would just be negative 1, 2, 3, 4 on the real axis, and down 3 on the imaginary axis. So not real hard to graph these at all. Let's plot a couple of these on the same um, complex plane. So remember this is real and this is imaginary. Some colors here. So 4 plus 2i would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 2 on the imaginary. So this is 4 plus 2i. Minus 1 plus 3i would be minus 1, and then 3 on the imaginary plane. So that's minus 1 plus 3i. Minus 4i is purely imaginary, so it's down 4 units on the imaginary plane minus 4i, and then 2 minus 2i is over 2, down 2, 2 minus 2i. Now, how do I find the absolute value of a complex number? Remember that absolute value was defined before as the distance from 0 on the number line. So in this case, my zero is actually going to be my origin. And instead of a number line, I'm going to be on this complex plane. And so again, this is a distance. So let's think about some point A plus BI. Well, that would just be some point A, and then it would be B on the imaginary axis. That's how I would plot A plus BI, correct? And so I want the distance to the origin. That's what I'm looking for. This would be my absolute value. That would be my definition of it. And so how do I find this? Well, if you remember back to geometry and your Pythagorean theorem, well, this distance here is A, and this distance here is just B. That's the height. And so I could define this as, let's see, a squared plus b squared is going to be equal to this squared. So this would be defined as the square root of a squared plus b squared. If that was too much for you all at once, let me just break it down once more. So let's call this c for a second. Then we know from the Pythagorean theorem that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. In other words, c is equal to root a squared plus b squared, and I'm not going to worry about the negative one here because a distance can't be negative. And so that's how I get what c is equal to, okay? So that's just a little aside.
So our main definition here is that the absolute value of a plus bi can be defined as root a squared plus b squared because remember again, the definition of absolute value is just the distance from zero, in this case, the origin. So when we find the absolute value of this, we just do root a squared plus b squared. And we get root 25 plus 144. Again, never, ever, ever take the square root of each one of those. You must add them first. So we get root 169, and root 169 is just 13. By the way, little SAT fact, there are a couple of um, right triangles that they often put on the SAT, and one of them is this three, four, five right triangle because three squared plus four squared equals five squared, and the other common one that they put on there is the one that we just found where one side is five and the other side is 12 and the hypotenuse is 13. So you don't need to know that for anything, except if you're gonna take the SATs, uh, these are good ones to know. Um, okay, so here, well, you might be wondering what happened to the real number part. Well, the real number part's just zero, right? So when I do a squared, that's just zero squared, plus b squared is just 17 squared, and obviously the root of 17 squared is just 17 itself, so that's my answer there. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.